Now let's get cracking because the long awaited figures on legal and illegal migration to the year to June 2024 were released this morning, with the number of work visas issued falling by 11% to still an incredibly high 286,000, although this figure is still over double 2019 levels. And meanwhile, the number of detected arrivals by illegal immigrants fell by 26% to over 38,000, with over 81% of those those arriving via small boats. Now, this all comes, as reports suggest, that the government is planning also to relax freedom of movement rules with the European Union to allow more young Europeans under the age of 30 to come and live and work in the UK with a reciprocal agreement for young Brits to have easier access to the European Union. Now, to me, that sounds like the opposite of Brexit. Let's cross over to Clacton on Sea now and speak with Chief News reporter Ray Anderson, who's with a man who no doubt will have a few strong opinions on this. Ray, you're with Nigel Farage. Over to you. Yeah, good afternoon, Martin. I'm here with the leader of Reform UK and Clacton uh, MP Nigel Farage. He's here at the uh, Clacton Air Show. Nigel, events like this give you the opportunity to speak to the local people. What are they saying to you about these immigration figures? Well, I mean, they're just negligible declines from all-time record numbers. Um, I think one of the biggest things is house building. Everywhere you go within this constituency, there's 50 new houses here, 100 new houses there. We're told from the Labour government those targets from central government will double. So the impact on an area like this of just the new houses, with, by the way, no more GP surgeries, no new roads, is really, really big. So people are unhappy and they feel that in the Brexit referendum and in voting for Boris, they voted for all of this to be put under control and they've frankly been ignored. And that's why they voted for me here. That's why they voted for reform. One of the comments we've been receiving is this uh, figure that we're hearing about how many billions of pounds is spent dealing with illegal migration to the UK. People are saying that in the roads and they wonder if that money could be spent in, in a better way here in the United Kingdom. Yeah, Chap at lunch was saying, he met a bloke the other day in Ipswich, just up the road, 22-year army veteran living rough on the streets. And he said, well, how can it be that a bloke like that, that's got, got a few mental issues, PTSD issues, is on the street, that somebody crosses the channel and gets put in a four-star hotel? It's the sense of unfairness. It's the sense of injustice. And it burns very, very strong. And if Yvette Cooper and Sir Keir Starmer think they can brush this issue under the carpet, they're wrong. One of the concerns as well local residents have said to us is that they have concerns about waiting lists at the NHS, availability of um, getting a dentist, an NHS dentist. But then if you look at these figures, these numbers, we know that the number of um, health and social care work visas have gone down by about 26% for legal uh, immigration to the UK. And so do you think that we're seeing the wrong kind of areas being reduced for migration? Well, look, I mean, the point about health and social care, health is we've capped the number of people going to medical school, aren't training enough doctors, so we rely on imported doctors. What kind of madness is that? And the same for nursing. We've made nursing an unfashionable profession. We've not encouraged people. We've made them go to university to get degrees before becoming nurses. God knows why. And so we take nurses from Africa and places where they're probably needed even more. So, no, no, I think what these figures tell you through all the different sectors, whether it's skills with engineering, whether it's medical profession or care, is we need to be training our own people to do these jobs. And I say that with 9.4 million people of working age in Britain simply not working. When it comes to illegal migration to the UK, Labour's keen to stress that they are clamping down on that. Something like 100 new national crime agency investigators, uh, also financial penalties for businesses who hire illegal migrants and the possibility of prison as well. Is that enough? And if it's not enough, what would reform do? I've heard it all before. Pretty Patel said all the same things. If you employ illegal migrant workers, we'll fine you. You may go to prison. Massive penalties for smugglers. Life in imprisonment, none of it. And you could put a thousand new enforcement officers in place, but if the European Court of Human Rights stops you deporting people, what difference does it make? 
are very clear that a country is not a country without controlling its borders. And you'll never do that with an activist foreign court in Strasbourg, which, remember, stopped that plane taking off to Rwanda back in 2022. We are clear that is the first step. I uh, can't let you go about asking you about these Labour plans to potentially relax freedom of movement rules with the European Union, to allow young people to come and live and work here, and our young people, vice versa, to go and live and work in, in Europe. What's your response to those plans? Some of our young people will go to live and work in Europe, but many, many more from Europe will come and live and work and settle full time here. And many of them may be lovely people, but our population explosion is the biggest social problem we face in Britain. Whether it's housing here in Clacton, whether it's access to GPs or dentists here or anywhere else, a 10 million increase in the population since Blair came to power has devalued the quality of life of everybody. It can't go on. Nigel, uh, Martin's got a question he's going to ask via me. So, Martin, take it away. Yeah, so the figures today show that the asylum cases granted have tripled in one year, a 40-year high. My question to Nigel is, will this get any better under the Labour Party or not? No, Martin's saying that the uh, asylum cases have tripled uh, in one year. He's asking, will this get any better? So what we saw in the figures this morning was the productivity of the Home Office civil servants literally collapsing in the year up to the general election, just not processing cases. Therefore, as Martin rightly says, the waiting list gets longer, but Labour will wave a magic wand, Martin. They'll solve all of it. They'll let everybody stay. Uh, Nigel, thank you very much for your time. Really do appreciate it. We've been here all day getting the views of local people. Of course, uh, Labour have been keen to say, Home Secretary Yvette Cooper saying that they're taking strong and clear steps to boost border security and ensure that the rules are respected and enforced. And many people do see these, uh, this decrease in legal immigration as a positive step. Thank you, Renison, and thank you to Nigel Farage there in Clacton. Superb stuff. Now joined in the studio by a political correspondent, Olivia Utley. Olivia, Nigel in fighting form there. And I guess the point is this. James Cleverley was doing the rounds earlier because, of course, these are figures from the Conservative regime, almost from a previous lifetime ago, trying to claim that these were a victory because they're slightly down. But the bottom line, two figures that stand out to me, it's still in one year a city the size of Newcastle. Castle, and that's just the work visas, let alone the student visas, 286,000 work visas and the asylum cases tripled to a 40-year high. Do you think that the Labour Party understands the magnitude of this issue and will actually do anything about it. The Tories didn't. Now they're in power. Have they got the appetite to tackle this? Well, I think that's a really, really good question. Over the election campaign, it seemed a little bit as though Keir Starmer would rather talk about anything mm. apart from immigration. Um, on illegal migration, obviously, he's put an end to the Rwanda scheme, which, let's just remember, was not up and running by the time Rishi Sunak left office, came into all sorts of uh, difficulties between when Boris Johnson first started talking about it in June 2022 and when the election was called in June 2024, uh, there had been no migrants actually sent to Rwanda. That said, you know, there was in the minds of ministers and in the minds of quite a lot of officials too, there was a route to that Rwanda plan working and Keir Starmer has thrown it out. There are those who are saying, did he throw out the, the baby with the bathwater? Because it doesn't really seem as though he has an alternative plan for illegal migration, particularly apart from increasing the number of caseworkers in the Home Office, which, which might well be necessary. When we, when we look at these statistics today, it does seem as though the asylum system essentially ground to a halt in the year before the election. On legal migration, I mean, the numbers the numbers are down. And uh, yes, you can say that they are still double the numbers in 2019. It isn't a, an all-out victory by any means. But James Cleverly um, is making the point that those numbers have decreased by about 26% on, it must be said, record highs last year. But that is because of changes that mm. the Conservatives brought in. And those changes were not allowing uh, care workers uh, and uh, students to bring in the their dependents when they come here. What is Labour going to do about that policy? By the sounds of it, they're going to try and keep it in place. 
But is Labour committed enough to getting our own sort of homegrown workers in the NHS and care sector? Because if this policy is going to work, we will need to replace those people who were coming over here because that drop is very, very significant on work and social care visas. We will have to replace them mm. with Brits. Now, Olivia, I'd like to ask you about the idea that's been touted now, I think, three or four times um, in recent weeks, and that is the return of freedom of movement in the European Union. Now, I know that you speak to Labour ministers and they will vehemently deny that this is going to happen. In which case, Olivia, why does the idea keep getting floated out? Are we being nudged? Are we being fluffed up for this to be feathered in a backdoor betrayal of Brexit? No, I think that's a really good question. I mean, you could say no smoke without fire. The Labour ministers I've spoken to have said that, uh, that, 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 they are, that they are not planning to introduce a freedom of movement deal but the idea does keep coming up. And we know that Keir Starmer does want to reset Britain's relationship with the EU. What he wants is a, a veterinary deal so that food coming over from the UK to the EU and vice versa isn't subject to uh, so many checks. And he wants some sort of science and research agreement with the EU. Now, in exchange, the EU have said that they would like to see some sort of freedom of movement. And one option that seems to be on the table is a, is a deal whereby uh, Brits between the ages of 18 and 30 could go to an EU country for up to four years to work, volunteer, study, etc. Mm -hmm. And in exchange, EU citizens between 18 and 30 could come over here. Now, obviously, that would be very, very controversial among uh, Brexiteers because one of the key reasons for Brexit was to stop that uh, freedom of movement. And this, and this would essentially sort of bring it in again by the back door. Does Keir Starmer... I mean, I reckon that instinctively he would quite like to go for this proposal if it would get him what he he wants uh, with the EU, totally. but would he be willing to uh, to push ahead with it uh, when obviously it would be seen as very controversial and would give a lot of fuel to the Conservatives' fire? Okay, Olivia Utley, thank you. Excellent stuff. Now